Hello, welcome to a new Creature tutorial. This tutorial is going to cover the new video post process export mode of Creature. It's gone through quite a few improvements and refinements, and I'm going proud to present to you the new post process mode. So before I continue, let me talk about the export options in Creature, right? So I'm sure you're all familiar with the export options in Creature. You can obviously export into images of video or FBX, or you can export into game engines, which allows you to export, say, this Fox animation into a runtime format, and then you can play it back in your game engine using the Creature runtimes. Okay, so that's the first way, or two ways to do export. However, if you want more advanced ways to export just frames, in particular for video, for video work, and you don't really care about game engines, so this is a new uh, feature. The post-process mode is the feature that is used if you just want to export sprite frames, or a video, or, or GIF, for example. And you should click on this button instead, so I'm going to go through this feature right now. So let's click on post-process, okay, and so this is the video post-process mode. And as you can see, it mirrors your actual animation in Creature itself. In other words, if I play the animation, the post-process mode also shows your character playing in the scene. Okay, so it basically mirrors what, what's going on in animation mode, right? So you're probably asking, what's the point of post-process mode? Well, of course, by default, you know that I can also export into images and video using the default mode, right? But post-process mode gives you a quite a few more options with regard to video and frame image frame export. So consider using it if you need more advanced features. So let's go through a couple of the features in post process mode, right? So the first thing you can do is you can actually add in GPU based video filter effects into the post process mode. So if you click on the plus sign, you can actually have a bunch of effects that you can add, for example, pixel art, and that basically makes your animation look like pixel art. And you can, of, of course, configure the different things with pixel art. You can make it less blocky, for example, so it's more like a retro 70s feel. Or you can, again, tone it back down to, say, 60, and that gives, gives it a very, very blocky feel. Okay, So that's pixel art. Now I can remove it, of course. I can add other effects. I can add stuff like shimmer that shimmers the character. right? I can also add, add, say, an outline. So this basically allows you to give it some kind of a cartoon effect. So notice now your character is outlined over here. If I remove it, notice a difference, right? So the outline effect basically outlines your character using a, an accelerated GPU filter, right? So now I can see the outline of your character. OK, and of course, you can layer these effects together. So I can, say, add a pixel art first. And then I can add, say, a shimmer. So now I get a shimmering pixel art. And then I can add, say, the outline, and so on and so forth. OK, so those are the options, the GPU filter effects. And we probably will add more in the future if they are useful to help you add some special effects while, when you want to export your character. OK, the next thing we, we're going to go through are the options. Now, obviously, you can export the output into images. Again, remember this video, the post process effects feature is specifically tailored for video export, right? So we can export into a series of frames and then you can then use your own favorite encoder to encode them. You can export into a GIF or a movie, in which case it will use the your OS's default or most optimal movie encoder to encode it in. Norm normally it's some kind of MP4 or WMV format. Right, OK, let's go through the next few options. The other option you can do is actually import a reference image. Now, I'm not going to demo the full feature here because it's pretty obvious. But what it allows you to do is basically place some kind of background image of your choice in the background of this character if you're recording. So if you wanted to place, say, a bunch of trees or whatever you've hand painted personally and you wanted to be, make, it in the back, make it in the background of this character, you can do, do so as well using the reference image option. Right? But of course, I think what most people are interested in, in doing is they want to crop their images. And it's really simple in the post-process mode. You just simply drag a boundary across your character, and there you go. You have a cropped image. And it also shows you the resolution that you are going to be cropping at. Right? So you can actually click on the crop image and then actually set specific resolutions if you want it to be of a specific size. Okay, so now it sets it to 800, for example. So again, you can you can drag it or shift it around. If you click somewhere else, it, it you know this deletes away the the crop boundary, and then you can redraw a new cropped 
boundary again. Okay, so that's for cropping. And then you have set resolution. Now, by default, the full screen recorded resolution is 960 by 600. If you want to increase it, if you're doing like super high res recordings of your character, you can obviously increase it to 100%, in which case you will see a very high resolution, right? Okay, so again, this is a very useful feature depending on what you're trying to do, but it allows you to record really high def images or video if you're doing that sort of thing, right? And then finally, let's talk, talk about the export itself, right? So let's say I picked a movie, and when I click, click on export, it will immediately show you the frame range you're going to export. And here, let me go through a couple of options. Obviously, first of all, you need to pick your output path for your video. Okay, you have that. Now, there's also a GPU export option. Now, I recommend this option only for people who have powerful video cards. This means that a lot of the video processing is going to be run on your GPU. It can potentially be faster, but if your video card isn't up for it, it might actually be slightly slower, or in some cases, you might run out of video memory. So I re recommend people with high-end or discrete graphics card to use this feature. Otherwise, just uncheck it. It's fine, because it'll still run multi-core or multi-threaded on your system. So it's still really fast. You probably want to check super sample because this increases the quality, the output quality of the export by quite a bit. So I highly recommend it. And then, and then there's time delta. This is the delta time between the frames it's going to sample. So in other words, this is how quickly the video is going to play back. Now the default is time delta 1, which mirrors exactly what you see in animation mode. Of course, you can set it to 2, in which case it's going to skip every other frame. So it's going to go at twice the speed, or you can even set it to fractional values. If you want to do slow motion, I can do like 0 0.25, for example. And that will actually give you a subsample time, time delta. Right. Now, the coolest feature I would like to show you today is actually motion blur, which has just been added to the video post-process uh, effect, and it's super cool. Now, this is a very high-quality motion blur effect, typically what you see in film and movies. So you can check that, and then you just tweak the number of samples. 20 is the default, but if you want higher quality, I recommend you to go much higher. Of course, the processing time will be improved. And then there's the strength, which is how much motion blur is actually on the output of the export or the video video export, right? So let's take a look at the results of the motion blur, right? So I am going to pull up a video which shows you exactly, let me close this, I'm going to pull up a video which shows you exactly the results of motion blur versus no motion blur. So on the upper left, let me actually repeat this video. On the, on the upper left, you have the video of the fox recorded without motion blur, it looks very crisp and clean, which is kind of cool, right? But if you add motion blur, it adds a level of realism to the animation. So by just checking that simple checkbox, you get this result by video export, which is really cool. So you have a choice now. You can either export a very crisp, clean video if you want it, or if you want it a more realistic look, you want to sort of convey the, 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 the meaning or the effect of high quality fast motion to the viewer, you can check the motion blur checkbox and that will give you this quality of motion blur for your character like this running fox, which I think is extremely compelling, right? So I think it's really cool and this, the motion blur quality again you get is what you typically see in VFX or film. So it's, very high, it's a very high quality motion blur processing algorithm. So I hope you guys appreciate that. So that is motion blur. Now, and then finally, the most, ex well, not the most exciting, but one of the most exciting things that also has been added to the video post-processing mode is actually, actually 3D lighting, right? So I'm actually going to activate that right now. So right now you see this dragon, one of the sample characters you can download from the samples page, like, like so. But I can actually activate 3D lighting. So when I click on this light bulb icon, this new window pops up. And then now I am going to pick... I am going to pick a bunch of normal maps that I've generated with the Sprite Bump tool. But again, you can use any normal map you want. You don't, you don't have to use my tool. You can use any normal map, but I recommend using Sprite Bump because it's very advanced. So, and then you fill in the different options for the normal, ambient, and specular maps, right? And you check Enable. Let's turn on the emissive, and let's close it. Let's see what we get. And look at that. That's pretty cool. Now you hold down Alt and right drag to change the light source position, right? And immediately you see, let me just play the animation. Let's loop this animation. Okay. So immediately you see that I have my dragon 
light it up with a 3D lighting effect with ambient occlusion, self you know, has sh self shadowing, and normal maps and and specular maps. It's really cool. And when you record this video, you also get, of course, the, the 3D lighting effects. So consider doing that, using that feature, if you want to add some kind of 3D lighting effect to your 2D characters, and it makes it looks almost looks almost 3D. I highly 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 recommend it. Right. Okay, and finally, one of the features that you pr guys are probably wondering about is what if I wanted to record transparent frames? That is, I just want the character uh, with motion blur and say 3D lighting, but I don't want the background color. Well, very simple. Move your mouse over to File and click on Preferences. And in the color option, check the transparent option. So once you check that, the exported frames will also be transparent PNGs. And that you will probably find useful if you're doing frame by frame animation for video encoding or if you're trying to do just plain sprite frames to put it into your game engine or game. So that's really it. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As you can see, the post process effects module is very, very, very powerful and allows you to do some really high quality film type effects if you, if you want to use Creature as an export video tool for frames, movies, and that sort of thing. And you can also add motion blur, very high quality motion blur, and also basically 3D lighting effects to your characters. So thanks for watching and happy animating.